Hello everybody. Welcome to Every Rock Has a Story. Today I've got big news. My hair. I finally got my hair cut after I don't know how long. It's been a long time. My wife cut my hair. I was kind of worried. But my hair was getting so long it was really starting to drag me down. Any of you guys feel like that? Your hair is getting long and, and crazy. So my wife cut it and I think it looks uh, pretty good. So I feel like a new guy. I don't have that hair dragging me down anymore. And it reminded me of another one of the rocks that I have here. The rock of the day is all about being dragged down. Today's story is about this rock. Now you saw this rock. I showed this as an example in my very, very first video about making our science journals. And I'm gonna show you my science journal page that I finished about this rock. If you remember, this rock was called Eclogite. Eclogite, and that's the rock of the day. And I'll tell you why Eclogite is all about being dragged down in just a bit. Let me just show you this one up front again. It is pretty. Eclogite is one of my favorite rocks. It's because it has a lot of red garnet. See all that red? That's all garnet, my favorite mineral. And it's got all this deep green. And that deep green is a mineral called omphacite. Omphacite. It's got a funny word. Omph, omph, omphacite. It's a variety of pyroxene. And then the white stuff is some quartz. And there's a little bit of mica in there too. But the important part of eclogite is the red, red garnet and the green, green omphacite, red and green. That's like the colors of Christmas. And so some people call this a Christmas rock, Christmas rock, because those red and green colors. Now I've done a lot of work on eclogite. I've collected eclogite all over the world. I've collected eclogite in China, in Greece, in France, in Italy, in California. But this one is from a different place. This one I didn't collect myself. I got this one from our collections at Boston College. This is from Norway. Norway has some of the most beautiful eclogite with those brilliant greens and reds and a little bit of white. Eclogite tells the story of subduction. Now we've talked a couple times about subduction now and I want to show you my science journal because it'll help us tell this story. Here's my journal page. I'll bring it a little bit closer. So we started this the very first day. I drew the rock. There's our eclogite. I drew the name, wrote the name. And then on the first day, I wrote a Christmas tree <laughs> because it reminds me of Christmas. We call this Christmas rock sometimes. But this is the new part that I drew to finish my story. Subduction is when the ocean and the, the rock or the crust below the ocean made of basalt. See, there's a little boat in the water to remind you it's the ocean. When that basalt ocean crust goes down and it goes under the continent. I call it the continent brown here. And as it goes down, it turns blue and turns into blue schist. We talked about blue schist in yesterday's video. And then as it goes even deeper, it turns red and green. It turns into eclogite. Eclogite is what you get when it gets the deepest of all. And what's interesting is where you find the eclogite is right below where we get the biggest volcanic eruptions made out of that volcano fuel, which we learned is water. Now, yesterday I told you that the blue schist, which is from sort of halfway down that subduction zone, held the story of that volcano fuel. The volcano fuel was still mostly in the blue schist, but by the time it turns into eclogite, almost all of that water has been released into the mantle to cause the volcanoes. So eclogite is what you get after the volcano fuel has been released. Now, here's the thing. Water is pretty light. It's not that heavy. Rock is much heavier than water. So when the water gets released, when that volcano fuel gets released, what gets left behind our eclogite, it is heavy. More importantly, it is dense. It's more dense than all the rock around it. So eclogite is so dense that it pulls. 
and drags the ocean down, down, down the subduction zone. That's what's happening in our picture here. And that's why I drew that arrow down there. That dense eclogite is dragging the ocean down underneath the continents. This is a story about being dragged down. Eclogite is the dense rock that drags the oceans down under the continents, deep into the mantle. Have you ever heard of something called plate tectonics? Or just tectonics? What if I told you that the pull and the drag of that dense eclogite pulling down that subducting ocean crust, that slab of ocean crust. What if I told you that that pull from eclogite was the most important force driving the motion of the plates? It's true. There are a lot of forces and factors that contribute to the motion of the plates and the oceans and the continents themselves. And it's a very complicated story that took geologists hundreds of years to figure out. Now, you might be asking one question about this eclogite. Well, maybe if we have one of these subduction zones and that basalt goes down and turns into blue schist and turns into eclogite, I can see how that would be pulling down, dragging down that ocean crust. But you might be asking, how do we start a subduction zone in the first place? Right here on the eastern coast of North America, there's no subduction zone. The continent is connected right to the ocean. How do you think you start a new subduction zone without eclogite? You know what? I don't know. Scientists are trying to figure out that great puzzle. How do you start a new subduction zone without the pull of the dense eclogite pulling it down? Remember, science isn't about what you know. Science is about what you don't know in the start of new subduction zones is one of the most exciting and interesting questions that we're trying to figure out today. But this Norwegian eclogite tells the story of a great subduction zone that was operating over 400 million years ago. One of the great collisions between the ocean coming together between North America and Europe. And this was a bit of that collision, that eclogite that went, went deep and then got caught up in the mountains that we still find in Norway. A rare record of those deep subduction conditions, dragging down the ocean, and driving plate tectonics. Lots still to learn. Lots of unanswered questions in science, and that's what makes it fun. I hope you like this story about eclogite, and I hope you are still making your own science journal pages, and I hope I see you at my next story. Bye-bye.